I am a tech head, which naturally means I'm also a tinkerer. I literally repair all of my stuff and I have been for a while now. This is a little toolkit that has been a big help. My trusty screwdriver set since 2016. I'm not gonna lie, it was super cheap, something like five bucks or so, and the quality was dodgy, but regardless, it did the job. Then there is this one, an electric precision screwdriver kit and the box is heavy for its size. There is real metal in there. Essentially it's a case with 24 bits for 24 different kinds of screws and a two speed electric screwdriver. So to test it out we'll be taking apart some stuff, essentially three phones, one from the late 90s, another from 2007 and another from 2012. I'm going to start with the new one because psh, why not. 353 grams is the weight of the contents of the box, which is a bit more than the 258 grams of the Huawei Mate 40 Pro. A pretty heavy smartphone. As much as this set has 24 tips, which are plenty, my old one has 32, which is eight more tips than the Xiaomi, so I can definitely unscrew more screws with my old toolkit. All these tips are enclosed in a metal casing itself with a plastic compartment with a push release mechanism to get it out. They are built in magnets to ensure that the bits stay in position and they don't fall out even if the whole thing is upside down. <laughs> this is so scary. The screwdriver itself has two buttons for screwing and unscrewing as well as a switch right at the top for switching the speeds of the screwdriver or locking it so you can use it with pure muscle in the event that either the torque needed is greater than what the screwdriver can provide or the battery has run out. Then there is a USB-C port for charging it right at the top. Let's take apart the Microsoft Lumia 540 first. It has seen better days for sure, but it seems it was sent for repair some time in its life and a bad job was done on it. Some screws in here are not the original screws that come with this phone and some are even missing entirely. So it's a combination of T4 and Phillips screws, which most of you call star. Nothing the Xiaomi screwdriver cannot handle so far. The motor and gearbox are producing enough torque to make this look easy, as easy as taking this phone apart. Just a couple of screws, two ribbon cables and an antenna cable. And it's all done. Gone are the days when smartphones were this easy to repair. Now everything is put back together and it's all working now. Oh no, wait, <laughs> the battery is dead, but plugging it into the Redmi power bank shows us that it turns on. It's alive. You can get this power bank at the Mi store as well. I'm already sold on this one so far. And if you are too, you can get it from our good friends at the Mi store. All they do is Xiaomi products, including this fancy screwdriver, and you can find them at Eastgate Mall in Harare. Their stuff comes back with a warranty and is all original, so no worries on quality. That said, we still are not done torturing this piece of tech yet. Let's wind the clock back to 2007 with the Nokia 5000D. Interesting how we are also using the T4 screws here, same as the ones Microsoft was using on the Lumia 540. Yes again, we have a missing screw on this one, but regardless, it's a walk in the park for the Xiaomi screwdriver. This was peak engineering during its time. Brick phones were getting more and more undesirable, with thin and compact being the sexy trend of the time. This was one of the most compact phones on the market, but it was also very densely packed inside. For all my Ama 2Ks, this was the phone to have, and since you were born after bricks had made their debut, this was what a brick looked like. Unfortunately, I cannot find the charger for the Nokia, but I promise it works. I'll charge it up and push a couple of buttons on it and put the clip here. See? See what I mean? <laughs> Perfectly functional. As for the brick, the charger is long gone. This is the Siemens C10, and my millennials from the teapot-shaped country of Sadza Eaters, you will remember Mango. This was the phone people remember when we talk of Mango. During this era, phones came with interchangeable housings instead of the cases we have now. This was one of the slimmest bricks you could get at the time. It could fit in a pocket and the antenna didn't need to be pulled out anymore when making calls. Battery life was horrible. On top of that, it took an eternity to charge and all it did was make calls and SMSs only. You didn't even get an alarm on it. Taking it apart was a bit harder. 
It's the only phone of the three that I had never opened before, so we are experiencing this process together for the first time. The screws require more torque than in the previous phones, and it's here where we see two things. First is, this little guy is now breaking a sweat, but the second one is how it's dealing with it. It seems to have a built-in torque sensor. So if the torque sensor exceeds a certain level, it will only operate in bursts until the screw is loose enough to be unfastened continuously. It's really fascinating to watch and also feel that impulse torque at work. It's crazy how the tiny Nokia 5000D is half the size of the Siemens, but orders of magnitude more powerful. There is roughly 10 years between these two. Tech moves at a seriously rapid pace as shown by the sheer size of the components on this phone. The large chips in the Siemens are 10 to 20 times smaller than what we have in modern smartphones. Look at the size of those capacitors. They are a lot bigger than what comes in modern day laptops. These sort of capacitors are what you might find in a power supply. It's wild. Seems I forgot to put back the display interface. Uh, this little thing sends display information from the motherboard to the display. What does not help is that I had already put in 60% of the screws. Normally I would have left this for another day, but lazy as I can be, I have something that can help with that. So everything is taken apart again, then we painstakingly try to align the display bus in its slot. Now we can throw all the bits as they were for a 100% restoration process. The last four screws definitely needed more torque than what this screwdriver could handle. Time to go old school. Pulled the dial into manual mode and went in with pure muscle. This did get the job done, but all the time I was sweating bullets because when you put it on this mode, it locks everything in place using the internal gearbox. The problem is I have no idea how much torque this gearbox is rated for, so pure muscle from a sadza eater like me could break things inside it. Thankfully that was not the case. The operation of these three casualties went smoothly with zero disasters to speak of. Battery life! I think it's good enough seeing that I was able to go through all three phones with whatever battery this screwdriver came with out of the box. Charging is alright, it took about an hour to go from a red pulsating charging light to a white solid one, which meant the battery was full. Really, I like the build quality of this. The torque is good for electronics. I doubt it will be able to handle anything more, to be honest, but um, it's designed really well and it looks really good. I just need a bit more confidence with how much torque it can handle when I use pure muscle with it. This cool piece of tech goes for 30 bucks. Now, let me say if your job is opening up stuff all day, you rapidly suffer some fatigue. Something that this electric screwdriver really helps with. It's worth the money in my book. For my fellow technicians, this is something you need to give a try. Also, really want to hear your thoughts on this. Thanks for watching.